I want to give our viewers a sense of where things stand at the starting line in the battle for Punjab and then we'll get their insights on what they think is likely to happen on the 1st of June. So I'll begin by showing you where these parties stand in terms of vote share before we get to the first vote being cast on the 1st of June. So the Akali Dal, going back to the 90s, and remember it's 96 that the alliance with the BJP was struck, has had a vote share of towards the late 20s, 29%, then 34, 34, 26, and 28. So late 20s is typically the standard Lok Sabha Akali vote share. The BJP by itself is barely touching single digits. They're hoping to increase that this time. They're at 9%, 11%, 10, 9, 10 in 2019. So they've just about hit double digits. The AAP is a relatively new phenomenon in Punjab politics. They got off to a smashing start in 2014, picking up 24% vote share, which crashed to 7% in 2019 as voters realized that they were just not in the fray in the national equation and therefore their vote share came down to about a third. The Congress has had fluctuating vote share, but typically late 30s, 38%, then 34, 45, 43, 40. But you can see the swing in the movement here from as low as 34% in 2004 to as high as 45% in 2009. The Congress's vote share in Punjab can really yo-yo up and down. And that's really why the Congress is a big opportunity and also a big threat in Punjab. So that's as far as votes are concerned. Let's now come to seats and show you uh, where these parties stand. So the Akalis at the bare minimum have two seats, two strong seats going back uh, two decades, the Akalis have always had at least two seats. It's gone up to as much as eight in 2004, but typically they've had two seats. The average has been close to four. The BJP, again, two seats looking strong. They've had as many as three, as low as one. The AAP, as I said, got off to a flash in 2014 with four that crashed to one in 2019. The Congress typically has had eight. So in three elections, they've had eight. Otherwise, they've had two or three. So as I said, the Congress has a lot to gain here and a lot to lose, and that can happen very quickly. Now let's come to the next data set that we're going to show you, which will give you a sense of how the votes have been moving. So while AAP is a relatively new phenomena, but it's also a, a kid who's established his presence now. And therefore, that's the big change. So if you see in the last elections, the AAP vote share uh, went up by 35% uh, in 2022 in the assembly elections versus the 2019 uh, Lok Sabha election. So similarly, if you look at the Congress, in the assembly election, their vote share went down 17%. Uh, if you look at the BJP, their vote share went down about 3%. The Akali vote share in the assembly election went down by 10%. The biggest gainer was the Aam Aadmi Party, which had a 35% increase in its vote share relative to the 2019 Lok Sabha elections. So we did some scenario modeling. And what this modeling will show you is, you saw the baseline figures. If the votes were to move in some of these scenarios, what could be the final picture in Punjab. So this is the 2019 Lok Sabha picture, the Congress at 8, the BJP at 2, the uh, AAP at 1 and the Akalis at 2. If AAP retains its 2024 assembly vote share, if AAP retains the like, number of votes that they got in the last assembly elections, AAP could get 6 of the 13 seats in Punjab, the Congress could get 4, the Akalis could get one and the BJP could get two. That's scenario one. This is based on the 2022. It's not an opinion poll, huh? just so that nobody gets it wrong. If it's a simple calculation of assembly segments and the leads in the assembly segments into Lok Sabha seats, that's what it looks like. Scenario two is if AAP loses some of the vote share, because this is not an assembly election, this is a Lok Sabha election, and people might be less enamored of Bhagwant Maan and AAP at this moment than they were during the assembly election when they were desperately seeking change. And therefore, if there is just a 2.5% uh, shift away from the AAP, off AAP vote share, then AAP comes down to 5, Congress at 4, Akali is at 2, BJP at 2. 
So those are just two scenarios that we've drawn. With that being said, let me now go across to our guests. And I want to start with Jasmine Shah first. Jasmine, you know, Arvind Kejriwal is out of jail. This is a battle between Congress and the Ahmadmi Party. It can be argued that 2022 was the peak of the up wave in Punjab. People were desperately seeking change. Now they've seen you in action. They say, ah, okay, we've seen them. They're not that much different. All of the magic and the miracles they promised haven't really materialized. And therefore, this is really an election where what will be at stake is how much vote share does AAP lose from the peak that they hit in the last assembly election. Do you agree to that, that you had about 40% vote share last time? This is really about how much it comes down to. That's really what this comes down to. That's really what is at stake over here. Jasmine Shah. Rahul, I think there is uh, there can be any number of hypotheses as to what will really happen. I think one needs to put uh, one years to the ground to really know what is the mood of Punjab. 2022 was a defining year in Punjab politics. Let's not forget that. It, it cannot be seen as one of the election years in continuum. There was a rupture of how politics was in Punjab before 2022 and what happened. And why do I say that? A party like Akali Dil, the, the strongest regional party was limited to only three seats. Five former and sitting chief ministers lost their election. Charanjit Singh Channi, the sitting chief minister, fought from two seats. He lost. Congress ne wapas unko ladwai. I do not know kya soch ke. So people were tired with all the political parties. They gave an opportunity to up. Now the question is, that you correctly ask is how happy are people with with the last two years of AAP's governance? And all the indicators, all the points, data points show towards the fact that people are extremely happy with the governance model that AAP is offering to the people of Punjab. Just look at two, three uh, simple facts. First, uh, the electricity in Punjab is today uh, being offered free to around 90% of the households. In this time where Modi ji has done nothing to rein in inflation, this is nothing but a boon. It's a vardan that there is a government that is providing free electricity. Uh, number two, you look at the industry, you look at the jobs. Punjab always had this outward migration issue. Now people and the youth are staying in Punjab. 45,000 government jobs have been offered. 76,000 new crores of new investments have come into Punjab just in two years. We know about Mohalla clinics, more than 800 Mohalla clinics. Every village, Rahul, if your uh, 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 team goes to in the ground, ask them about their experience. And I'm, I'm saying this because we know it to be true. People never believed that there will be a functional clinic with free dawai, you know, free medicine, free diagnosis. So all of this has definitely only strengthened the fact that AAP came with a promise. It's delivered okay. a lot into So your, you're, you're claiming and naturally so deliver. that AAP has done a fabulous job, that people are happy with this government and therefore this will be a validation of the AAP's performance. Ramesh Vinayak, you've got your nose on the ground. Are people still as enamored with AAP as they were in the 2022 assembly elections or do you think some of that craze and fever has now come down? Uh, well, uh, Rahul, uh, not really. I think, you know, uh, they are facing uh, a semblance of anti-incumbency. Yes, they are using uh, this free power of three units, uh, 300 units, uh, you know, as their trump card. They are also tom tomming about, you know, this uh, more than 40,000 jobs they have given but you know uh, there is a you know uh, anti incumbency but it's not you know uh, intense to the extent that it can uh, upset their you know uh, apple cart you know uh, because you know you know to be sure chief minister Pawan Kumar's personal image remains clean you know and uh, he is a kind of you know very spirited uh, campaigner you know, I have seen his campaign, you know, uh, the way he is leading it with a very How rustic does this medium. Which business of Kejriwal being in jail impact AAP's perception on the ground in Punjab? Is that a negative or is he getting sympathy because of it? Uh, I guess it, it won't have much impact in Punjab, to be very honest. I don't think it will cut a, you know, a sympathy kind of card in, uh, in, 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 the, in the state. Uh, but I think, you know, AAP still is in the reckoning uh, because of their track record, you know, which, you know, their spokesperson has listed. And, uh, you know, also, as I said, that, you know, Chief Minister, you know, still remains uh, uh, clear and above board, you know, vis-a-vis -vis other uh, political parties. 
so so i guess you know aap is uh, pretty much in the game and uh, so is the congress you know uh, you know what has uh, rahul uh, ha- is helping uh, aap in punjab is the way bhagwant man is hopping on anti centrism you know this is one of his major kind of uh, uh, pull plank you know that look center is uh, uh, discriminating is you know uh, withholding punjab 9000 crore of funds you know and you know you give us 13 seats so that we can uh, you know uh, get all this money from the center and you know anti centrism really sells in punjab anybody okay. who seen to be taking on daily you know punjab versus delhi so i can show you that know, you know you make an important always, point i want to show our viewers know. a data set which makes that same point that the level of anti centrism is very strong in punjab like it is in uh, tamil nadu and this actually comes out so if you aggregate all the votes that are cast for parties that are pro center versus all the votes that are cast for parties that are anti center you can see the anti center parties have had somewhere in the mid 60s 67 62 62 and then going up as much as 83 in the last uh, mood of the nation the pro sentiment pro center sentiment is typically in the late 30s 38 38 45 45 33 so the pro center sentiment is lesser this is one of those states where the modi charisma is simply not seen empirically in the way that it is in other parts of north india in fact during that interview that we did with the prime minister i asked him this question about the popularity of his government and his own person in punjab versus uh the rest of the country and what he was doing to try and bridge the perceived gaps between himself and the sikh community here is the response from the indian prime minister pradhanmantri ji aap hamesha ye kehte hain ki aap sikh samuday ke bahut nazdeek hain yahan pe swarn mandir ki tasveer bhi lagi hui hai jahan hum baithe hain lekin ye bhi haqeeqat hai ki punjab mein aapki lokpriyata baaki desh mein jitni hai usse thodi kam hai aur sikh samuday mein kai log aapko thodi shak ki nigah se dekhte hain aap hal mein kanpur gaye aap patna gaye wahan pe aapne gurudware mein matha teka kya aapko lagta hai ye jo duri hai ya perceived gap hai aapki koshish aapki soch aapki niyat aur wo samuday aapko jis tarike se dekhta hai usme wo jo gap hai usko aap kam karne mein kamyab hue hain ki exactly main aapke paas jankari kya hai main nahi janta hu आप चुनाव के हिसाब से देखते हैं तो तो मेरे पास कोई जवाब नहीं क्योंकि मेरा मैं उसे बाहर चला जा चुका हूं जी अच्छा होगा कि आपके कोई पंजाबी चैनल हो या आपके पंजाबी लोग हो तो एनालिसिस करें कि इस देश के सिख समाज के मूलभूत मुद्दे क्या रहे हैं और किस सरकार ने उन मुद्दों को कैसे अटेंड किया है और फिर लिस्ट निकालिए बाहर तो आप हंड्रेड में से हंड्रेड मार्क मुझे दे देंगे अब हो सकता है मैं उन तक नहीं पहुंच पाया वरना मैं तो पंजाब में काम कर चुका हूं जो मैं सालों तक पंजाब में रहा हूं और इमरजेंसी में मैं सिख के वेश में रहता था अंडरग्राउंड था तो मैं सरदार के वेश में रहता था और मुझे सहज रूप से मैं यहाँ दिल्ली में रहता था तो भी मैं कभी कभी लंगर खाने जाता था इसलिए नहीं कि मुफ्त का मिलता है मुझे एक श्रद्धा दे दीजिए मैं श्रद्धा से जाता हूँ मैं आज भी मानता हूँ जी कि सिख समाज ने बहुत बड़ा योगदान किया है देश के लिए बहुत बड़ा योगदान किया है आज भी वो जहाँ भी हैं ये दुर्भाग्य है कि पंजाब में ड्रग्स बहुत फैल गया है वरना वे एक प्रकार से डिसिप्लिन लाइफ वाले समाज है हम गर्व करें ऐसा समाज है जी मुझे वो स्वीकारते हैं नहीं स्वीकारते हैं वो तो उसके लिए तो मैं क्या कह सकता हूँ जी 